أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله بعد All praises due to Allah May Allah's peace and blessings be upon his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We're still talking about the world of uh, jinn and uh, devils uh, Last time we talked about a few of the characteristics of uh, jinn and the devils and the devils are like the bad disbelieving jinn Shayateen, shaitan as shaitan is the iblis is the father of all of them um, the one who disobeyed Allah that did not prostrate to Adam there are other jinn not not necessarily from his offspring you know like there are other jinn uh, Available, but he he um, has his own offspring, of course. But not every shaitan is like from his offspring. But shayateen, they are the disbelieving jinn. They are the disbelieving jinn. Afrit, uh, afrit is the jinn with extra power. So you have jinn. This is the species, the general, like humans, general human. You have general jinn. Then you have Afrit of Al-Jinn, like the Afrit who said to Sayyidina Sulaiman, I'm going to bring you the Arsh of, uh, you know, the throne of uh, the queen of uh, sheep. So he has extra power than normal Jinn, like a human being who is extra rich or extra muscular or extra smart, have a IQ, high IQ, right? So I'm just trying to make analysis here. So what is the name of that Jinn? Afrit. Can be Muslim or non-Muslim, can be any, anyone. So not necessarily a bad person, okay? But shaitan for sure is a bad, a bad one, okay? Like you have, a, a, among the humans, you have uh, thieves, you have murderers, you have serial killers, you have people who rape, you have people who do those things, okay? And they get away with it, or they plan, they're very smart and intelligent, and they do wrong, wrong things. So that's shaitan engine. Taib. Um, they have weaknesses as well as they have strength. Anybody has weakness. They are not God, all right? So they came with weakness. Um, and their plan is weak. Why? Whatever superpower they have, Allah give you more power. If you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, sincerely from your heart, seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan, you do your adhkar, you are shielded all the time. They cannot come to you, it doesn't matter how strong they are. It's a wall of steel, they cannot penetrate or even see sometimes. If you say Bismillah before everything, Alhamdulillah, man. that's why I'm advising everyone, at least say 100 times Bismillah Rahman Rahim every day. Just say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. You know, sometimes we think Bismillah is when you want to start something. Huh? We say Bismillah when you start something, that's what we think sometimes. No, but Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a dhikr. Astaghfirullah, you don't have to do something wrong to say Astaghfirullah, do you? You don't have to see something amazing to say Subhanallah. You don't have to get some ni'mah to say Alhamdulillah. You don't have to do something to say Allahu Akbar. You get it? So it's a dhikr of Allah. So when you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, what does it mean? It means everything in my life, everything in my thoughts, everything is with the name of Allah. So you can say just Make word for yourself, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, like that. You do it at least 100 times a day, protection for you from everything, inshallah. Especially when you start your day in the morning. Shaitan cannot come to you. There's no way. It's clear, you know. And when you make this as a habit, that's it. You are like someone who has steel around. They cannot come. So they are da'if or not da'if, they are da'if. Weak. So when Shaitan takes over someone, it's not because... Shaitan is strong, no, because that person is weaker, right? Is weaker, then that's why they take off. Allah Azza Jal says in the Quran, Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. Surah An-Nisa, surah number 4, verse 76. Surah number 4, verse 76. Truly, the planning or the plotting of shaytan is weak, Allah Azza Jal says. Also, <clears throat> Allah told us that shaitan and the jinn and Iblis himself, the strongest, biggest, most powerful among all of them, does not have access to the pious and righteous servants of Allah. Allah Azza told them, 
ان عبادي ليس لك عليهم سلطان وكفى بربك وكيلا my servants truly my servants you do not have any type of authority over them and Allah is the best protector for them surah al isra verse 65 surah al isra verse 65 also Allah azza jal says وما كان له عليهم من سلطان إلا لنعلم من يؤمن بالآخرة من من هو منها في شك and he did not have any authority over them and we make this as a test and a trial to know who believes in the hereafter and who is in doubt from it so Allah makes shaitan as a test for people so some people will ask why Allah created shaitan if he is that bad test for everybody You have to have a test. People don't like tests. Students don't like tests. You don't like to be tested. But it's part of life. You have to go through hardship to become better. This is Surah Saba' verse 21. So write those surahs and their ayah number. Why? Because you want to know proof that shaitan, jinn, and ifrit, and everybody does not have authority over you. You get it? So this is, sometimes we study the world of jinn and devils. Oh, it's like scary and all this kind of thing. <laughs> all right? It's superstition and like, oh man, this is powerful. It's amazing. It's interesting. But the most important part is that nobody can harm you except with the permission of Allah. And Allah Azza Jal give you the tools to defend yourself. It is like we take care of ourselves. So we do not get viruses, we do not get common cold, you take the shots, you take the things, same thing. You do the ruqya, you read Quran, you do your dhikr, you are always clean, you always have wudu, you make sure you have tahara, you know where you sleep is neat, you know the house is nice, it smells good, good smells, huh? That's why I tell people, after use bathroom, pray air freshener. Sometimes we make a joke or laugh or something like that. No, take these things seriously. You do not want to have bad smell around you. Yeah, you do not have, want to have bad smell around you. Air freshener should be there. That's why, you know, if you smell, people smell sweat or you smell something or somebody use the bathroom or, you know, you're coming from work and your socks smell bad, you know, always make sure you control bad smell and spread what? Good smell. Always make sure you do not have something that's hurting to the eye, but something is pleasing to the eye. Always make sure the sound is not hurting to the ear, but it is pleasing to the Ear. That's why we tell people all the time when they come and want to Ruqya or I have this or maybe Jinn, this and that, you find that they listen to loud music, for example, or they jump up and down or they stand naked in front of the mirror. So we'll talk about these things, you know, you know that that's those those are the issues that create vulnerability and weakness in a human being that the Da'if Jinn comes to you. Right? Da'if, they are Da'if, weak. Yani the virus in itself, how strong is a virus in itself? The virus, yeah, the viruses that come. How, how strong is the virus? Is the virus strong in itself? But it had a weak immune system to get into, yes? Once it finds that window of a weak immune system, then it flourishes. It has to have a host, yes or no? But in itself, is weak. That's why you put antibiotic, it kills the virus. Yes or no? Yeah, so that's why you don't want the virus to come, then take antibiotic to kill it. You can actually live a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> virus might come, but it will become easier for you to fight it. You understand? But if you have a very weak immune system, we have a problem here. You know, come and do the ruqya, and then they go again, they come again, do the ruqya, then they come again, it doesn't work. Why? Because they are not living a spiritually healthy lifestyle. I want you to mark my words, they are very important. Like you take care of yourself physically, There are some people who are normally okay, some people who are healthy, some people who are athletes. It's different, yes? So same thing. Some people, they get sick, but they heal fast. If somebody has diabetes and they get wounded, what happens? It doesn't heal fast. Why? Because they have a problem that prevents them from healing. You don't want to get to that spiritually. Everything happens physically, it happens also what? Spiritually. That's why we tell our teenagers why you find it hard to pray. Because when you are young, shaitan has more access to you. Because you are rebelling, 
you are building your personality, you're trying to find your identity, right? You don't like authority. All this is fertile ground for shaitan. <laughs> Someone like that, shaitan takes over. That's why I find the youth, they don't want to pray. They want to listen to music. They want to run around. They want to hang out with friends. They want to stay up late. They want to go to all, all the things that, like that. Okay? So there's people come and say, make dua for my children. Make dua. I can make dua, but the environment is not helping. <laughs> All right? And they can do the ruqya, can read the whole Quran 70 times. It's not going to work. You have to change the lifestyle. Slowly, yeah. Slowly. You took nice, you know, try to replace things, try to make healthy food, try to make a healthy lifestyle at your home, right? Spend more time with your children, parents. Hmm? So it's always a vacuum that it is filled by the wrong things. So I want this session, not only we talk about the qualities of jinn, no, we change ourselves too. This series is to change ourselves too, right? It's to change ourselves. Don't be afraid of the jinn. La, be worried about building yourself to be strong. Jinn have their own world. They will not touch you if you're strong. Why they will try? And you find somebody walking in the street, have like this muscles and everything like this. Do you think anybody want to pick a fight with them? Who wants to pick a fight with them? Hatta even if another muscular guy yani, will size them up and say, maybe he knows he will beat me. So they don't want to challenge. Even the equal, the only child. Even if somebody is stronger than them, they will think twice. Am I right? Yeah. So if somebody like, they, they, they are very well known that they are very smart in math. Nobody wants to challenge them, right? They play chess very good or they play sport very good. Nobody wants to stand in front of them. Why? Because they know they're going to be defeated. Right? So it's always like that. Right. Uh, <laughs> Shaitan cannot convince you with argument. What does it mean? Like when I talk with you, I can tell you why you have to do something. Or why you don't have to do something. That's how we talk with each other. Shaitan doesn't work like that. He knows he's going to fail. He cannot tell you kufr is better than Islam. He can do that. And he cannot say that leaving salah is better than salah. He can do that either. But he can make distraction. He can make distractions. That's, that's what he can. Or he make tazeen. You know tazeen? Like, you know, decoration of something. Decoration. Like adornment. You know, they send those makeup uh, artists. You know, makeup <laughs> artist videos. You know, find someone who, yani after the makeup, you cannot even recognize them. Actually, there is a man who made makeup for a woman. I'm sure uh, many of you saw that one. You know, there is a man that come, a man, show you how makeup can change. Yeah? They're trying to advertise makeup for women, right? And said, even you are a man, you can look like a pretty woman. So imagine if it's a woman, of course, she's going to, you know, amazing. <laughs> so you, either, you, you go with, the, with their thing. That's the whole analogy. So that's what they do. Shaitan now makes things like that. He make the package look good. But he cannot convince you what is in the package is good for you or not. He can't do that. We humans can't do this. Okay? Like I can't convince you. But shaitan does what? Package. And always someone with the weak iman, they go behind the package. The, how it looks. How it looks, right? Let me give you an example. We are as humans, yeah, not, not, not women, not men, but all of us. You know, they made an experiment. Someone from one of the Ivy League, I don't remember which one, Harvard or something, they made an experiment in the street with food. Okay? To tell you that people go behind, behind the looks, not the quality. All right? So what they did is that they made like some type of cookies. You know, chocolate chip cookies and other cookies that everybody likes. Everyone likes them. And they put two different types. One here, which the organic, most expensive, beautiful, nice flour, butter, cooked by the best chef, everything, but they make the cookie weird shape. You know, weird shape, like weird shape, it looks like things that sometimes not appetizing. So they make it look like it is not a circle. It's like made like a, you know, scrambled, bad. It doesn't look good. No art. 
you know, sometimes the cookie, if it is an art shape, still good, right? But they make it like somebody just, uh, you know, did the dough and so they put it in this side. Well, the other side, very cheap quality things, but they make it art, art you know, they make the art in it. And they offer the people. This one here, and they said this, this is the, these are the ingredients, cheap ingredients. These are the organic expensive ingredients. And this is cheap price, and this is expensive price. You get the point here, right? This is cheap quality, but more expensive while it looks good. This one, great quality, cheap price, but it doesn't look good. Everybody bought this one, and nobody bought from this one. whole day and the guy standing there convincing people saying this is what it took this is the process this is this this is that and all of that and I will show you a video even if you want how it is made yani the best quality in the best uh, kitchens by the best chef we don't care everybody what even before they explain they just sit there and watch the experiment right people come look here look there you find people lining in here but nobody standing in here then he starts explaining. Still nobody comes to this one. Then he even want to offer for people samples. They still don't want samples. They want from this one. All right? What is this? That's how shaitan approach things. Does not matter the quality. People go behind what? The look. Quality is a different thing. When they eat it and taste it and then they get a stomach ache, then they will say, I wish I didn't do it, but it's too late already. All right? So Shaitan does the same thing. After the people disobeyed, they said, I wish I didn't do it, but it's too late now. Same people made another experience, experiment. They went and bought a food truck, you know, food truck and the grill, and they start making burgers of the most disgusting things. Okay? So they said, we have lizard burger, skunk patties, whatever, you know, this kind of thing, and for real. And they bought those things for real. Nobody bought from them. Why? Because they're just selling the ready made meal. Okay? And meal ready, but oh, skunk, yow, ew, oh, like that. But then they moved the food truck and then they started grilling and making the smell. Smell? Right? And then they did not say, so people come line up for the sample. Say, what is that? They said, this is the exotic, blah, 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 whatever animal hunted by someone, and this meat is cut like in a certain way. And all. So, well, really? Yeah, this burger like costs like 100 bucks, but it is only for $5 for today's special. Oh, give me five. What is happening here? What's happening? Do you know what is happening? What just happened here? Sales. That's how sales are, right? It doesn't matter how bad is the thing. It's how good is the salesman. Right? It does not matter how expensive is this thing. It is how it looks. Shaitan said, By you, O Allah, بما أغويتني لأزينن لهم في الأرض ولا أغوينهم أجمعين إلا عبادك منهم المخلصين I am going to decorate everything and package it for them so they cannot resist it the only ones who resist are your sincere servants Allah will give you ability to see يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تتقوا الله يجعل لكم فرقانا ترى بنور الله ومن لم يجعل الله له نورا فما له من نور whomever Allah does not give the light of iman no light and whoever fear Allah, Allah Azza will give them the ability to see right from wrong. Only sincere servants will figure out the trick. But everybody else will go behind. What is this ayah number? Surah Al-Hijr, ayah 39 and 40. Surah Al-Hijr. So whom the shaitan will have access to? Those who are pleased with his deviated ways. Those who do not want commitment. Those who do not want responsibility. Those who fight against authority. Those who do not want discipline are the ones the shaitan will have access. Not because he is strong, because their immune system is bad. They let their guard down. You go to the boxing ring like this. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> What's going to happen? How long can you stand there? You know, one, two, three. How, how long are you going to stand there while your, hand, while hand, while your hands down? 
Shaitan uh, come yawm al-qiyamah will come yawm al-qiyamah and say exactly what I just told you now. He will say, I did not do anything to you. I did not have any authority over you. Allah told you that I don't have authority. So what did I do? I just told you, come here, and you came running to me. I made it look good to you. You came running. That's all. You know, people see like something, so I want to go see what is in there. Yeah, okay, don't go. I they go, and then they said, I wish I listened to you. It's too late. The ayah says, وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبَتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُ أَنفُسَكُمْ don't blame me, blame yourselves. I did not have any authority over you, except I called you and you came responding. This is Surah Ibrahim, verse 22. Allah told us that only those who accept him as their leader and friend are the ones whom he will affect. Surah An-Nahl, verse 100. Those who associate him with Allah Azza wa Now we have people even worship the shaitan, you know that, right? You know, the satanic worship thing. Someone actually brought me their book here in the masjid. <laughs> you know, these people who do like certain satanic uh, things, they brought the, their book, their book and their things and said, you look, even if you look at the book, you get this and you get that. And if you copy this, and all of these kind of satanic things. Hmm. Shayateen will come and will whisper and motivate. That's what they can do. Time. You have a personal trainer, you go to the gym, you hire a personal trainer. What does the personal trainer do to you? Do they actually like hold your hand and make the muscle grow? Yani? <laughs> what do they do? Motivate you. This is the only thing. They guide you, yes, with the plan. But you can do that yourself. You can print it from the Google now. You can download an app. So it has all the training and exercises and more than the personal training. But why you go pay the personal training to stand with you for one hour? What is the one thing that only a human being life can give you? Motivation. That's the only thing. And this is what make you, that's why people said I can't exercise, I have to go to the gym, right? Why? Because you see other people in front of you. Somebody with you. Some people go to the gym, but they have to have someone friend with them. That's called what? External motivation. You have internal motivation and external motivation. Not everybody have internal motivation. Internal motivation is what makes you wake up in the morning and pray Fajr. That's called internal motivation. It comes from where? Inside. You want to be good. Internal motivation is when you open the book and do your homework and study. Nobody told you anything. But external motivation, if you do this, I'll give that. One more, do this, do that. You're good, you can do it. That's external motivation. Okay? So shaitan does that. Shaitan does that. Alam tara anna arsalna shayateen ala al-kafirin ta'uzzuhum azza. Shayateen is motivating the kafirin to push them towards this. I'm with you. Go fight Muhammad and his people. You're going to win in Battle of Badr, right? And when they come, he said, oh, I see the angels coming. I oh, you run away. <laughs> shaitan. This Surah Maryam. Surah Maryam, verse 83. So shaitan does not have any argument, does not have any proof, no convincing arguments. What does he do? Packaging, allurement. That's it. He makes something glittery. You know the mosquitoes? They go toward the light. And they get burned. Zap, zap, like this, but still go toward the light. He can't resist it. So shaitan makes that light for people. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in the hadith, by the way, in Sahih Muslim, that you are like moths, you know the moths, like farash, like you know this, this uh, insects and all of that, going toward the fire. Somebody light a fire and they're going through it. And I am pulling you back from your waist. You know, like you know the belts on your waist, I am pulling you back, but you are running away from me and jumping in the fire. He said, you and me, like this man, light a fire, and the moth is like keep going to the fire to get burned. And shatin make that fire look good, nice. Too late once people jump in it. No way shaitan will have authority on you unless you have a path. You have a path. You have a weak point. You have a vulnerability. You have an opening. That's it. That's why you say wound. You have a wound. What do you do? 
clean it, put like anti anti uh, you know uh, antibiotic and cover it. Sometimes you know make sure it's cleaned all the time. Make sure it is dry. Instruction, you know why? Because you don't want infection. Infection comes if it's not taken care of. All right. So that's why, that's how shaitan will access if there is an area that will infection and you do not take care of it. So if you have weakness, cover it. Type. Does that mean shaitan cannot come to believers? Yes, he can. Believers have weakness too. With the noob, every time you commit sin, you're opening a small point. You, you lose a point. And the more sin, more points lost. Consider it like two colored dots. You know, you have red dot, you have like a white dot. Okay? So you have like a piece of fabric. Okay? Uh, every time you put a dot in it, it's red. Sometimes the ink expands, right? Expands. Maybe I'm here, I cannot see it. But if another dot comes in the same spot, covers more, until the whole fabric will become red. Okay, but it is there. So that is where the access comes from. So shaitan can come to people because of their sin. Because of their sin. There is a hadith of Rasulullah about the judge. You know the judge who stands in the court, sits in the court to judge among people. This is a big serious responsibility. That's why Rasulullah said every three judge, two in hellfire and one in Jannah. Yani one third only of the judges will go to Jannah. You see how, how bad is this is? That's why when a, a person becomes a judge, it's like a test for them. They cannot associate with people, they cannot accept gifts from people. They, you know, there's lots of t trial for the judge, you know. Judge cannot sit and joke around with people who pray and leave. Because you can stand in, in his court tomorrow, and if we are friends, then, you know, the, their life becomes a hard, hardship. So judge is not like something like, oh, I'm a judge, you know, like I'm a judge, just in charge. No, it's, <laughs> it's like you have, you have an easier route to Jahannam now. So be, be careful, you know, like, you know, if you are not a judge, you worry only about your deeds, right? Now you want to worry about the rights of people. If you judge without, without due, process or without good investigation you transgress someone or give the right to someone who doesn't deserve or took the right from someone who, who deserves like and so on Rasulullah said inna allaha ta'ala ma'al qadi ma lam yajur Allah is with the judge as long as he does not transgress fa'idha jar if he transgresses tabarra'a min Allah leaves him alone wa alzamahu shaytan and let shaitan control him. This judge is a Muslim. This judge believes in Allah. You see? But when he transgressed, Allah left shaitan to access him. So protection of Allah is taken away. That's why Rasulullah said, لا يزني الزاني وهو مؤمن يعني A believer cannot commit adultery. While he commit adultery, he is not a believer. He might be a believer in general, right? But faith left him at that time. That's why he disobeyed Allah with a major sin. وَيَرْتَفِعُ الْإِيمَانُ فَوْقَهُ كَالظُّلَّةِ You know, the, the, the faith leaves him like a cloud above his head. If he fix and repents, it comes back. If he doesn't, it keeps going away from him. Then shaitan access. Hmm. So, there is a story, some people say it's not authentic, some people say it's authentic, but the moral of the story is valid. I'm, I'm sure many, some of you maybe heard it before. Hassan al-Basri, one of the tabi'een, he narrated that story. He said there was a tree that it is worshipped from the nations before, beside Allah Azza Some people worship a tree. You know the Japanese people in their tradition, there is a certain type of tree, I don't know what is it called, that has a different type of flower, they will come and like worship the tree. Like, huh? Yes, a core tree, something like that. So it's a very nice tree. You know, one, I have a friend in uh, North Carolina. He said he moved to a house, 
But then when he moved to the house, he find like a Japanese family. They come every morning <laughs> and they stand under the tree and they do certain things. Muqaddasa يعني عنده. And he kind of like, what these people do? Then, you know, like he got bothered and they told him this is a holy, sacred tree that brings luck, whatever, this and that. So I don't know if he cut it or didn't cut it. Uh, anyways, yeah, so told him don't come here again. <laughs> so anyways, Hassan al-Basri said there was a tree that it is worshipped beside Allah Azza wa And then a man came and said, I don't like this. Allah has to be worshipped, so I'm going to cut this tree. So he took his axe in the morning and خلاص, he's has a resolve. I'm going to go cut this tree so people don't worship it again. Does not have any power of it or anything. So Iblis came to him in a form of human being. Iblis, the big guy. Yeah. He came to him in a form of a human being. He said, what, where are you going? Habibi, where are you going? You see these people cutting, the, you know, worshiping that tree and all that, and I'm going to cut it. He said, why? Who hurts you? They have their world. Do you worship God? They don't. Everybody like free. He said, no, I am going to cut it. I'm responsible. I fear Allah and these people are deviated. If I don't cut it, Allah will account me. Mm. Told him, okay. Can I make a deal with you? I give you something better. He said, what? He said that, uh, don't cut it. Go home. And every morning, you will find a gold dinar under your pillow. One gold dinar under your pillow. One gold coin and under your pillow, as long as you don't cut the tree. Okay? So if you cut the tree, the gold dinar disappears. Plus, that's the deal. So, okay. Um, so, he woke up in the morning and he found two dinar, not one. Two. Not one, but he found two. Alright? So, next day he did not find any. No, no money. So he went, took the axe, and they going. He told him, Where are you going? He met him again. He said, I'm going to cut the tree. He said, But we again. He said, But you did not keep your part of the deal. He said, Then you cannot cut the tree. He said, No, I'll cut the tree and I'll show you. He said, no, you cannot cut the tree. So he is going. Uh, so shaitan put him down. Like he grappled him and he put, knocked him down. He told him, do you know who I am? He told him, no. He told him, I am the shaitan. I deceived you. Now you are coming to cut the tree for lose, loss of money. You are not coming for the sake of Allah. First time, you came for the sake of Allah. If I let you, you would have cut it. So you should have pursued, you know, should have insisted. Stand on your way. If you are with Allah, don't compromise. You cut it. If you went, you cut it. I would not have even, I, I didn't have anything possible to stop you. Except, you know, like I offered you something. I couldn't convince you otherwise, but I distracted you. You see now the distraction? He did not convince him why cutting the tree is not good and this and that. He couldn't do that. He just tell him, I'm going to give you something. So he got distracted. Okay? Package. So he told him, now you are going for the money. Subhanallah. Also, shaitan can come to the people of knowledge and cause that knowledge to be lost. Subhanallah. وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي أَتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَادَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهِ فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِنْ تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَتْرُكْهُ يَلْهَثْ ذَلِكَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُصُصِ الْقَصَصَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ سُورَةُ الْأَعْرَافِ فَرْسِز 175 to 176 someone but he sold his, his soul to the shaitan. He got persuaded in one issue, then he followed the shaitan all the way. So Allah Azza wa Jal took that knowledge away from him. When Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that some people at the end of time will come 
that they very eloquent, they are very eloquent in speech, and they have knowledge, but they are hypocrites from inside. They sell their deen for the dunya, and they are munafiq. Rasulullah sallam رجل قرأ القرآن حتى إذا رؤيت بهجته عليه وكان رداؤه الإسلام اعتراه إلى ما شاء الله انسلخ منه ونبذه وراء ظهره وسعى على جاره بالسيف ورماه بالشرك قلت يا رسول الله يهما أولى بالسيف الرامي أم المرمي قال بل الرامي يعني he said at the end of time some person would come and raise the Quran have the knowledge until he become gain the status and all of that then he will uh, use that Quran and he will attack his neighbor and he will raise the sword and he will do that. Then that is the person that everybody should, you know, punish and should take uh, away from this society. Another one that the person who is um, eloquent in speech and he argues with the Quran and it end up deviating people. So shaitan actually can access people. So what is the common denominator here? Weakness in the heart. Right? Weakness in the heart makes the shaitan access. Whether a person is a disbeliever or a believer or even knowledgeable person. Have some weakness in the heart, arrogance, you know, something, some want the uh, dunya, you will find the shaitan gets in from there. Does shaitan fear humans or certain humans they become scary for shaitan? Yes. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab, Shaitan freaks out from you, ya Umar. <laughs> he sees you walking in one street, he runs away to the other side of town. That's how much he's afraid of you. Maybe you read the ayah or something, you burn him. <laughs> so he's af afraid. Even though Umar does not see the Shaitan. But Shaitan is afraid to come close to this man. And that's what happened, by the way. If a person is pious and righteous and fears Allah and is sincere and read the Quran and do the adhkar, Shaitan becomes scared to run away from that person. Scary, fear, fearful. He's fearful. So it's not only for Sayyidina Umar, but anyone. Anyone. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said also in a hadith, um, إن المؤمن لا يمصي شيطانه كما يمصي أحدكم بعيره في السفر يمصي يعني يأخذ بالناصية فيغلبه يقر يعني when the camel is standing you know they have like this ropes and stuff on the camel so person when he holds the camel down so the camel goes down with it like this right so the camel is huge if somebody ride the camel and push it down does it sit down يعني no but there is a way to make it sit down. So the, they have like something on the nose here. So when it's pulled, it hurts the nose. So the whole head comes down, so the whole camel comes down. He said, the believer does to shaitan like one of you does to the camel, like this, exactly. You bring him down like this, with the dhikr of Allah and the power. There is another hadith. How many of you saw a cartoon before? Huh? Talking to the girls, cartoon before that you have like an angel in one side and the devil in the other side. Yeah? One red and one uh, white, huh? And this one saying do good and this one saying do bad. Yeah? Okay. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, narrated in Musnad Ahmad, hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ma minkum min ahadin, none of you, illa wa qad wukila bihi, that assigned to him or her, قَرِينُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَقَرِينُهُ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ You have two entities assigned to each one of you. One from jinn and one from angels. قَالُوا وَإِيَّاكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Even you have one of the jinn. قَالَ وَإِيَّاي وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَعَنَنِي عَلَيْهِ فَلَا يَأْمُرُنِي إِلَّا بِخَيْرِ But Allah helped me so he does not whisper to me or say anything except good. That means you have one whispers eh, all the bad and one always tell you to do good. So there is an angel for each one of us, each one in your name yeah, that comes and tell you, oh, give some charity, go attend the class, have patience. Sheikh Mamdouh is late today, but have patience, you know, maybe he's good. 
But the other one said, why he keeps coming late, you know, like, why, what's this? So keeps, and someone whispered to me also when I'm coming, you know, maybe they are become more late for them. <laughs> or the other one said, no, no, I have to explain. You know, I'm just giving you practical examples. We are humans, all of us. But your deeds, your connection with Allah and overpowering yourself to do good makes the one super powerful and the other one is super weak. All right? And if you even extremely go more, more deeds, more deeds, the bad one become good also. So bo both are in the same line. One angel and one jinn, they both tell you to do good. You are saying Bismillah on everything. You're saying Alhamdulillah after everything. You wake up and pray. And you have tahara all the time. And you do all good things. And your food is halal. And everything is fine. So what does he do? If he cannot, if he, if he does not become like you, and he tell you, help you, he is not going to live. Right? So al-qareen, هذا muhim. Some people come for ruqya, and they have something called the mess of qareen. The qareen is so bad, that troubles them. And the qareen is the closest jinn to you. So be careful when you are doing things, that that qareen becomes good and helps you, actually. طيب. Allah Azza wa Jal can make the jinn help a human being with the power of Allah, yes. Sayyidina Sulaiman is a great example. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَابُ وَالشَّيَاطِينَ كُلَّ بَنَّاءٍ وَغَوَّاصٍ وَآخَرِينَ مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ Surah Sa'd 36-38 And we assigned the wind to go under his disposal. Sayyidina Sulaiman say, O oh wind, take me to east, take me to west. One month it goes toward the east, one month it goes toward the west. He travels. So he sits there and he says, Bismillah. So everything is carried up and the wind moves it to that side. Yeah, it's exactly like that. You know this big plimp, plimp they call it plimp? plimp. Huh? That? But without a plimp. Yeah. <laughs> so he's sitting there and it, moves up and I'm just giving you an idea so and shayateen the bad ones huh? the ones with supernatural powers and they are naturally bad they were under Sulaiman alayhi salam they are under his order to build and to go dive in the depths of the ocean to bring him the pearls and the and the all, all of this uh, you know reefs and all of that coral reefs and all of these things to bring him that's why when Balqis came, he told her to come in. She was far, and he's sitting on the throne. And he made all this made of glass. And under the glass, he made an aquarium. Yeah. All right? So jinn makes this thing. Now, how much technology you need for, for this to take place like that? He told the shayateen, I need all my flooring here in this uh, court, in his court, yeah, to make the aquarium. You can imagine now, يعني, if somebody is going to build an aquarium for you, it will take like weeks. And bring everything from the ocean, and the fish was under and everything. And it was so clear to the point that she thought that she will step in the water. That, that much. Illusion. Like she has optical illusion. Like the waves going, and she, خلاص, he's sitting on the other side of the water, you know. So she... Pulled up her clothes, he said, no, don't worry, this is earth, I mean, this is a floor, walk. She was impressed. Jinn did that, thousands and thousands of years ago. How this was cut, made smooth, made clear, you know, all of that. That's an amazing technology, right? You know, now we say laser and this and that. Now we're discovering these kind of sharp edged, smooth things, right? That, but that optical illusion is amazing. Ah. So, they go dive and all that. And some of them, when they disobey, Sulaiman had them chained in chains. Surah Saba, verse 12 and 13. وَمِنَ الْجِنِّ مَنْ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ Some of the jinn, they work labor in front of him by the order of Allah. وَمَنْ يَزِغْ مِنْهُمْ عَنْ أَمْرِنَا نُذِقْهُ مِنْ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ Whoever disobey, Allah Azza wa Jal punish them with severe punishment. What do they use to do? يَعْمَلُونَ لَهُ مَا شَاءُ مِحَارِيبِ They build mihrab. Mihrab is not the qibla. That's what we think about. This is called what? Mihrab. 
But the mihrab at all time is the place of worship, like a sanctuary. Like you build like a small area that people have khalwa in it. Like Maryam alayhi salam, kullama dakhala alayha zakariya mihrab. Mihrab is a place that has door, yeah. You know, has a door. And they come inside, they put their food for a month, for two, for whatever. And they stay there, you know, and worship and do all of these things. They come out only like to, you know, respond to call of nature and things like that. So mihrab is the place of worship. So they used to build for him this mihrab. He wants a mihrab here, a mihrab there. I wanted this specification. They will build it for him right away. Mihrab wa Making statues was allowed before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they make him statues of birds, of animals, of whatever he wants. وَجِفَانٍ كَالْجَوَابِ وَقُدُورِ الرَّاسِيَاتِ Big pots, you know, big pots to cook and to containers to put things in that no human can do. No human can do. And when you said, I want a skillet, that it is enough to cook 100 eggs at one time. مثلا يعني. So you need a specification now. Special specification to make it, the factory has to have a certain mold and all of that. You want a car with certain specification. It costs more and it takes more work to be order, right? Uh, for, for meeting the order. So he will make the order and they will make it to specifications. And this was all by the power of Allah. Huh? Power of Allah responding to the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. I said Sulaiman did not have an inherent power Right? But Allah gave him that power based on his dua. Said, Allah give me that power, Allah give him that power. Right? Ya Allah give me you know king, kingship that or power that nobody after me can have. And this was Surah Sad verse 35. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I did not want to hurt that jinn who tried to distract Rasulullah and he held him, you know. He remembered the dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam and said, Ya Allah, I don't want anybody to have control over jinn after me like this. So Rasulullah left him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this came in Sahih Muslim. The story says, Sahih Muslim, Hadith Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, Qama Rasulullah yusalli. Rasulullah stood to pray. Fasami'nahu yaqul, A'udhu billahi mink. We heard him say, I seek refuge in Allah from you. ثم قال then he said العنك بلعنة الله العنك بلعنة الله العنك بلعنة الله three times I curse you with the curse of Allah and he repeated it three times Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said and then he extended his hand as if he is taking something like this the Sahaba is describing Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم first he said I seek refuge in Allah from you and then I curse you with the curse of Allah three times then he held his hand like this then when he finished the salah said يا رسول الله we heard you saying something in Salah that we did not hear you before and we saw you extending your hand uh, and he says in adu wallahi iblis jaa bi shihabin min nar liyaj'alahu fi wajhi he brought some fire in my face distracting me with it you know like somebody holding a fire and distracting you with it like this fi wajhi and i said that uh, i seek refuge in you and i curse you with the then he did not go back he did not go back he continued then you know I went and I held him, but I remember that dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Otherwise, I would have left him for the kids to play with him in the morning. You know, when I extend my hand, I moved my hand back again. And then also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he uh, also said that when it happened to him at night as well, that Ifrit min al-Jinn, he tried to distract him in the salah. So he wanted to tie him to one of the pillars, but he remembered the dua of Sidna Sulaiman alayhi salam. Taib. Some people, they make lie and attribute it to Sayyidina Sulaiman. Some of them and their followers, they uh, use the jinn, use the jinn through magic. And they say Sayyidina Sulaiman used to use the jinn with the same magic, right? But uh, Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam had all the books of knowledge and all of the things that how he controlled the jinn and all that under his seat. When he died, the shayateen took it and they deformed it. They deviated. 
Allah says, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ Shayateen recite things on the kingship of Sulaiman after he died. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ Sulaiman a.s. did not disbelieve. وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا They disbelieve. يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ They teach people magic. وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِلَ هَارُوتَ وَمَارُوتَ And the sihr that was revealed to the two angels, Harut and Marut. وما يعلمان من وما زع مكان بابلها هروت وموت وما هم بضارين به من أحد إلا بإذن الله. No, they will not harm anyone with this magic except with the permission of Allah. ويتعلمون ما يضرهم ولا ينفعهم. Okay. وما يعلمان من أحد حتى يقول إنما نحن فتنة فلا تكفر. فيتعلمون منهما ما يفرقون به بين المرء وزوجه. يعني those two angels, their story in a nutshell يعني. And there are many stories, Israelites and bad and all that. The two angels, the fallen angels, they disobeyed Allah, Allah make them shaitan. All this is not true. Those two angels came down to teach people the magic that they can avoid the magic of the shayateen with. Right? And they told them this is fitna. You can use this right or you can use it wrong. You use it right so people cannot use it wrong against you. But people start deviating and use it wrong. So the angels came from Allah to counter the sihr of the shayateen. So teaching it to people. So people can do sihr this, 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 and how that's how you undo it. All right? That's how you undo it. But people started defeating and using So Allah said they will not harm anybody except with the permission of Allah, and they truly learn what harm, what's harmful to them, uh, uh, and they know that whoever uh, by this, Allah Azza Jal does not have anything to do with them, then Allah will make, let them be deviated. So they following what Shayateen did, not Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam had the Shayateen and the jinn serving him by Allah's power. Right? He ordered them, they do. Why Allah Azza Jal make them submit to him? He had that power by Allah. But he is not using sihr and uh, spills and uh, things. No. But people do. They, they, you know, we are part of the universe. Right? This universe has powers in it, have energy in it. There's water, there is dirt, there is soil, there is air, there is fire, there are elements. And then there are things like the moon, when it is like, you know, a full moon, the tide increases, right? And that's why also the blood circulation of the body goes up and down as well. Especially the beginning, of the moon pulls the tide. So anything fluid on earth started going. That's why people get angry and all of this kind of things. That's why they say hijama. You do the hijama on the 13th, 14th, on the 15th. Huh? You do that hijama, why? Because the blood is like going, so the hijama calms people down, you know, by taking the blood out and all of this. And you fast in the 13, 14, 15 because of that reason too. Yeah, so it calms you down because this is the time that you are agitated. Because the moon is getting full and all the fluids, is like the tide increases, right? So it makes people angry faster. So when you fast 13, 14, 15, everything is connected, right? So that's why, when people have knowledge of these things, they kind of do these spells and they know the numbers, right? And they know like the birth date of somebody, the stars are aligned in a certain way, and they make certain things, and the jinn serves that, so they hurt people. That's magic. That's basically what magic do, does, right? Magic does. Can make a person have headache, can make them see things, hear things, or feel things, right? Uh, they, can, they can do those things. But whenever you are connected with Allah, nobody can hurt you. Also, jinn cannot make miracles. They're just using their powers, right? They cannot make miracles. They cannot make a Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Qul la inna jamaat al-ins wal-jinn ala an yatu bi mithli hadha al-Quran la yatu na bi mithlihi wa lo kana baghum al-baghum zahir." If jinn and ins and all of them gather. They will not bring Quran like that. When Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if everybody gathered together, insahum wa jinnuhum wa fajiruhum wa, yani the believer, the disbeliever, the jinn, the human, the everything, to hurt you with something, they will never be able to hurt you except something that Allah Azza Jal decided. If they gather to benefit you, they will never benefit you except what Allah Azza Jal wrote for you. Right? So we believe those things. That's why I'm telling you this series is to increase your faith and belief and decrease your fear of the unseen and the unknown. Be strong and powerful. Allah Azza Jal make things under your control. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the jinn or shayateen cannot come in the shape of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there is a trick here. Someone comes to me and said, Ya Sheikh, yesterday I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the dream. Okay? I said, okay, describe. He described, said, that's not the Prophet. This is a shaitan. He said, but the Prophet said, uh, shaitan cannot come in his shape. I said, true. Shaitan cannot come in his shape. But that was not his shape. <laughs> right? And when somebody sees someone thinking that they are Rasulullah, it does not mean it is Rasulullah. This is rule of thumb. If somebody comes and says, I saw the Prophet in the dream, and for sure it has to be the Prophet, because shaitan, you know, the Prophet says, shaitan cannot come in my shape. Right? But who told you that was the Prophet to start with? First, you have to make sure he was the Prophet. And if you describe him right, okay, then we tell you, yeah, he's the Prophet, he's not a shaitan. But if somebody say, I saw in the dream a very tall guy, dark skinned, with short beard, and but that's not the Prophet. So that's a shaitan who make you think this is the Prophet. Yeah, people might see the Prophet, see the Prophet, describe the Prophet, but not in a good way. Like they see the Prophet, his beard is shaved. مثلاً, يعني, example. Or see the Prophet old, or see the Prophet young, or see the Prophet, but they, they can describe the Prophet. What does that mean? Means there is something in the Sunnah defective in their life. Okay, so if somebody sees the Prophet coming at them and talking to them, but his beard is shaved, said that you're not following the Sunnah right. Okay, and somebody sees that they are, uh, they are following the Janazah of the Prophet. Like someone come and say, you know what, there was a janazah passing and I'm asking, oh, this is the Prophet and I started following it. That's not a good dream. You know what does that dream mean? It means the bid'ah. Because you are, janazah, what are you doing? You're going to bury the janazah, right? So you're going to bury the sunnah. means all of these people following bid'ah. They're taking the Prophet to the grave, right? means they're burying his sunnah. means all this group is... So if you don't like this janazah, means you're good. If you are telling people don't go to janazah, you're fine. But if you join with them, means you have a problem now. All right? You, you, you get the idea. But if somebody saw that they are washing the body of the Prophet, it can be good or bad. So the dream world has its own symbolism. Yeah. But you have to describe the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Prophet comes to people like he's sad or he's sick something like that that means there is something need to be fixed okay so shaitan cannot come in the shape of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam also they cannot reach certain levels in the space la tanfuduna illa bi sultan Allah says in Surah Al-Rahman, verse 33-35, يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ إِنْ اسْتَطَعْتُ أَنْ تَنْفُوذُ مِنْ أَقْطَارِ السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ فَانْفُوذُ لَا تَنْفُوذُ لَا Heaven, or the, the, the heavens where Allah Azza Jal is, has uh, channels, like has gateways to enter. Once a person enter, some of them say, some of the scholars say this black holes. The black hole now, it's like you don't know what is behind the black hole. And whoever goes there does not come back. Right? That's the major rule of the black hole that whatever sucked in it does not come back. If it comes back, then we would know what is behind it, right? But they say those black holes means they are the entrance to another dimension. And that other dimension where the existence of, you know, the alam samawat alam samawat. So the jinn cannot go beyond a certain level. Allah says you could not reach to the sky. They cannot open a door that you closed it and said Bismillah on it. They cannot open it, they cannot penetrate it. They will penetrate it. Right? But if you, when you're opening the apartment door and you, or the door and you say what? Bismillah. And when you close it, you also say what? Bismillah. Before you close at night or something, you say Bismillah rahman rahim. That's why I'm telling you when you say Bismillah a lot, it comes what? Automatic. Right? comes what? Automatically. You exit the masjid, you enter the masjid, Bismillah, 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 eating, Bismillah, sleeping, Bismillah, everything. So they cannot enter. Cannot open the closed door. Cannot un... Uh, cannot uncover a pot that you put the lid on it. Cannot do that. 
That's why before you sleep, you make sure it's either the cup is like upside down or it is covered like this. You know, there is something. So when you close, you say, Bismillah rahman rahim Okay? If you put the lids on uh, pots, if it is inside the fridge, alhamdulillah, closing the door of the fridge acts like that. There is a door, yeah, right? If sometimes you put some food in the fridge, and it's not covered, not everything covered. You put foil or something, say Bismillah. Yeah. Whatever you're covering, say Bismillah on it. When you're covering it. And you should cover everything before you sleep. Should uh, wash all the dishes before you sleep. Should make sure there is nothing, you know, f liquid or anything uncovered before you sleep. Or you know, leave it in general. Don't, don't leave it. Either you finish your coffee or drink everything. Or spill it and wash it. And, you know, put it in the, in the dish, uh, whatever. That thing. Hmm. أغلقوا أبوابكم. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said close your doors. وخمروا آنيتكم. cover your pots and your uh, utensils. وأوكوا أسقيتكم. and close the opening of all the uh, containers of your liquids. وأطفق وأطفئوا سراجكم. turn your lights off. فإن الشيطان لا يفتح بابا مغلقا. شيطان cannot open the door that's closed. ولا يكشف غطاء. cannot take the lid of uh, or a cover of a pot. ولا يحل وكاء cannot untie like the you know the tying of uh, the water uh, jug or anything like that. That brings us to uh, the end of chapter one. Inshallah, next chapter we'll talk about the taklif of the jinn. Yani they have the same orders that we have as humans. We are ordered with halal and prohibited from haram. They are all the same orders and we will see the difference and the things that we agree with them, they agree with us, things that we differ from them and they differ from us. Next time, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, walhamdulillahi, Rabbil Alameen. If you have any questions, inshallah, please feel free to ask. Sure. How do you know? Yes. Very good, very good question. All right, the, the sign of the acceptance of a good deed that it is always followed by another good deed. So when you find it is easier for you that you are doing good deeds, means you're connected to Allah more. If you find that it is becoming hard for you to do good deeds, you know that the shaitan start taking over. Okay, so that's why sometimes you have to struggle a little bit. That's, a, as a, that's why I always give the example of the Fajr prayer, right? When you find it's becoming easier for you to wake up and you find that incentive from inside of you, nobody's around, but you find yourself motivated to come up, that means you're connected with Allah more than those who sleep it, sleep through. All right? You find yourself it's easier to put a dollar in the box. You find yourself it's easier to come to the masjid. You find yourself easier that you want to read the book of Allah. It's struggle in the beginning, yes. But then after a while, it becomes like a easier. Then you increase up. up and that's how you become you know that you are connected with Allah. So if you find that your tongue always saying the right things, find that your ears don't want to listen to the bad things. So you always evaluate yourself. If you want to know how connected you are to Allah, and I mentioned that in many khutbas, ask yourself, what am I doing now? Is pleasing to Allah or not? Keep asking yourself that question all the time. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking, wherever you are, whoever you are with, ask yourself that question. Is this situation, this person, this uh, food, this people, this place gets me closer to Allah? If yes, means you are connected to Allah. If no, means you are not connected, so go ahead and connect. Right? Ayyub, Jazakun Allah Khairan, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah Rabbil Alameen. Jazakun Allah Khair.